Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my full review, the digitally digested segment, for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3.7. Now this 7-inch Android tablet is priced at $199.99. You're looking at a 1024 by 600 resolution display, which is pretty good considering it's not in line with much of the high-res displays that we've come to expect, even in the 7-inch form factor. Uh, because of especially the original Nexus 7 as well as the brand new one with that 1980 by 1200 res. But overall, uh, the screen is still pretty good, and that has a lot to do with the fact that we're getting it from Samsung, one of the largest display manufacturers in the world. It's powered by a Marvell dual-core 1.2 gigahertz processor, which is, again, just okay. It's nothing impressive, and this is a reflection of the fact that Samsung has really uh, sourced each of their tablets uh, with different internals to reflect the different price points. They're really trying to flex those margins as much as possible. And whether or not that's really a good thing for consumers, I'll let you decide. But uh, in my opinion, that Marvell chip is not a performer I would personally want. I would definitely pick the Nexus 7 any day. But of course, this device is all about that Samsung brand, the uh, value-added infrared remote control, which much like its predecessor, works really well, has companion software, full-featured, uh, I'll be going through that a little bit later. You also, of course, have expandable storage, something that the Nexus brand is also missing uh, in the form of a micro SD card slot, which I think is important to a lot of users out there. Uh, you also have a front uh, 1.3 megapixel camera as well as a 3.2 rear camera uh, capable of 720p capture. Neither of them are best in class. They're simply functional and, again, just representing you know what you can get in a $200 form factor from Samsung. Now you also have the TouchWiz software. This is their own environment and that's where not only does the actual design of this device um, breathe and speak to uh, its brethren, the uh, Galaxy S4, that's exactly what it looks like, an oversized S4 really, more so than even a Note 2, uh, but it also shares that software experience. Now clearly it's not running on that same great hardware, so you're not going to get the same experience. This is a very inexpensive backdoor to the Galaxy experience in my opinion. And that's not necessarily a good thing. I think for someone who uh, maybe likes the software, likes the experience, but can't afford or doesn't currently have uh, one of the Galaxy smartphones, this might be a great first device for them. Uh, it's easy to work with and relatively bug-free, but when you get to multitasking and really pushing the device, the limitations of that dual-core processor, which is only accompanied by a gig of RAM, most of the tablets these days do have two gigs of RAM. The entire lineup of third-gen Galaxy tabs only have one gig of RAM. Another clear sign that Samsung is saying these tablets are all about finding a different price point for a different consumer. So these devices really are dictated uh, directly towards your pocket. Uh, there's no question about it. And with that said, I think that overall, when this tablet becomes a little bit less expensive, the entire feature set of, you know, the, the processor, the gig of RAM, the eight, only 8 gigs of internal storage, but of course that's easily rectified with the micro SD card slot, and then having good dual band Wi-Fi performance, I have to say that some of the, that might be one of the best bragging points of this tablet. Unfortunately, the processor and RAM uh, do hold it back, which you'll see in a moment as I do a little bit of web browsing. Uh, it seems snappy at first, but once you get things going, that's when the multitasking just takes a dive, unfortunately. Uh, I'll do a little video playback now. You'll hear audio performance as well. HTML5 if it decides to play. Seems I can't get in sync with the timing here. We'll try it again just not cooperating. And this is part of what I'm talking about with the performance from this processor. Now it looks like it's working. Or maybe not. And this speaks to the fact that I have to recommend flat out going with something like the first gen or second gen Nexus 7 when you're comparing it to a device like this. Uh, I do like the infrared remote. Uh, I'm personally a Galaxy Note 2 user, foreseeably possibly a Note 3 user very soon. So I'd be the first one to tell you all that this is a great Samsung product. Unfortunately, this, like much of the other third-gen Galaxy tabs, are really just all about pricing. And that doesn't end up yielding the best user experience. And that's a result of the processor, the low RAM specification, the onboard 8, gig, uh, eight gigabytes of internal storage space I think a, a user could live with at this price point. But it is 
uh, paltry at this point. I mean, even the Nexus no longer starts out at 8 gigs, and that's all about being a budget device. So there's something to be said for Samsung kind of baffling me on this one. You can see I'm not even getting this to play, and it's not the Wi-Fi connection. So let's go to another website for performance uh, purposes only here. And you'll see things load up. It's not going to bre uh, break or win any speed contests, no question about it. Um, but as I mentioned before, the actual Wi-Fi performance is decent. It's really held back by the processor and RAM, in my opinion. The software experience, pretty much the same as what you'll find across all of the third-gen Galaxy tabs. You're not getting the Note 8 feature or Note uh, 10.1 features. Uh, like, um, you know, being able to split screen and do true multitasking. Uh, that's not something available. That's something where Samsung is telling you, look, if you want higher res, more performance on the internal hardware, you want pen capability, you have to spend more money. And that's really what this tablet represents most, in my opinion, is that if you're looking for a budget Samsung experience, that's what this delivers. Does it del uh, deliver the best 7-inch tablet on the market? Absolutely not. So I'll you know reiterate that over and over again. It does perform relatively well, but you can already see here it's had some problems in this very brief demonstration. Um, but I will revisit YouTube again just to see if I can get some video there to play for you. You can see loaded up the full desktop uh, mode of or excuse me version of ESPN relatively quickly. It and it just it seems at face value like it works well. Pinch to zoom is smooth. No problems there. And uh, you can see things really don't get uh, too pixelated, which is surprising considering how low res this screen is. And that's why I say, you know, if I didn't know that it was 1024 by 600, I probably wouldn't rag on it as much. But the fact of the matter is it kind of is an unacceptable resolution unless you're an Apple fan. And that's where I hate to say it, the Galaxy, the third generation Galaxy tab line really does remind me of Apple because after all these look like extensions of their phone counterparts they run the same software they make you feel at home those are all good things don't get me wrong there's a different type of product for a different customer out there and that's the great thing about Android uh, however the low specifications the low resolution screen processor RAM all of those things those are the things that make me feel like we're looking at more of an Apple product than a Samsung product. So while I generally am a very big Samsung fan, this tablet is not a favorite of mine. I, I know I've been clear about that so far. Uh, it really is, again, I'll reiterate, just a $200 Samsung tablet, and it's the latest one. So you're getting the latest software. You know, with the Nexus device, you'd be getting all of your updates from Google. Here you do have to rely on Samsung, so that's important to note. It's going to have a longer lifespan with regard to software than going with one of their older tablets, clearly. But I would definitely recommend if you have to have uh, the Galaxy Note feel, look, and software, go with the Note 8. Do yourself a favor. Higher res screen, better internals, S Pen uh, functionality. I really like that tablet, and its price has dropped uh, pretty steeply. You can now get it for 350 or less. And it originally retailed for 400. You're also looking at 16 gigs of internal storage there, as opposed to the eight here. Let me go ahead and just try to pull up uh, my page again, my channel, and see if maybe this time it'll actually cooperate, uh, unlike what we had before. So I can just show you guys something from the channel. <clears throat> And again, this is running on HTML5. This is not Flash. You'd have to sideload that and use uh, something really preferably like Boat Browser. Seeing if this is loading. And multitasking is where you're not going to see anything uh, good from this tablet, as I've mentioned. These things are not going to be pretty. You also get a decent uh, demonstration of the audio performance, which is relatively strong. That is a strong suit of this tablet. Apparently, it's not playing back there, but it will on the main page, so I'll just jump back. <clears throat> Even though it wasn't playing for us earlier, it looked like it was starting up. So I'll give, I will give Samsung a chance here. I know I've been pretty critical of this tablet, but for good reason. Nexus 7. 
so far I have to tell Of course, this isn't a 720p uh, native screen, but I just wanted to see if that would even, if it could deal with it. I'm hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the new Google Nexus 7. Now, of course, this is the second general. And all the things I'm trying to do here would be much smoother if we were on a different tablet, and that's just to do with hardware. It's a this matter of fact. Tablet. Now, brand Buffering. These are all problems you would not have with the Nexus device. And I'm going to reiterate again that I am a big Samsung fan. My daily driver is a Note 2. It probably will be a Note 3 shortly. So uh, for those of you who think that I'm anti-Samsung, I'm not. I'm certainly not paid by them either. So that's why you're getting a realistic review of this tablet. Um, but overall, it does function. It's up to date in terms of software. Uh, if I jump into their app drawer, uh, some widgets. This is part of when you get, you know, that Samsung custom experience, you get some custom widgets like the memo pad, uh, some nice things to do with the calendar, uh, which I'll jump back to. I think they're back here, right there, like the S planner month, uh, monthly calendar that you can throw up uh, as well as your uh, mini today. Those are nice touches, you know, things that generally you'd have to buy. And that's, that is one area arena where this is a value oriented tablet. Uh, that most $200 tablets, including the Nexus line, really doesn't have. Even though the Nexus kills this in every way on hardware, um, it doesn't have these additional software cues. But these are not for everyone, so that's important to point out. In terms of applications, this is what you're going to get stock. You know, Chrome, uh, the camera, very basic, nothing really to get excited about. Front-facing and rear are pretty bad. I will tell you in advance, don't expect anything beyond basic functionality. Uh, don't expect to take any good pictures with uh, that rear 3.2 megapixel camera that is also capable of 720p video. Uh, everything here is fairly standard. Dropbox integration, uh, Samsung's own game hub. They do try to sell you content. No, not that that's, you know, anything new. All the, well, I won't say all, but most of the manufacturers do that already. That's part of what media consumption devices like this are all about. You do get... Um, as we were just in a stock internet browser beyond Chrome. Uh, if you pick up a Nexus device, obviously you will only have Chrome, no uh, stock internet browser. And uh, beyond that, some of the key applications that you get in this software package, which many would argue is just bloatware, but I, as I've said over and over, do like TouchWiz. Polaris Office, that is a full version. Peel, the smart remote application. This is what's going to allow you to use the infrared um, <clears throat> receiver on here, or I should say emitter, to basically control your home theater system. You can choose your region, uh, and it'll mimic, uh, give you a virtual remote control uh, to match your provider, as well as basically a virtual guide. And that'll work in tandem with Watch On, another application, uh, which is another companion for the infrared remote. Two great things. The only other manufacturer that does this is uh, Sony, so I give Samsung and Sony credit. This is a value-oriented uh, feature. As you can see here, it's a tutorial on how to actually use it, basically showing you how you enter your zip code, and then it'll show you what's on in your area, and it gives you enhanced uh, watching capabilities. So also cool, definitely uh, value-added in my opinion, something you're not going to find on another $200 budget tablet, and that's important to note despite the meager specifications, screen, uh, processor, RAM, all of those things, you are getting more in the way of software than you will at this price point, even with the Nexus 7. Of course, um, you can argue the Nexus 7 will give you more in the way of software simply because you're going to have the latest version uh, of Android through that device. And I would make that argument, just to be clear. But in terms of value-added software, without having to buy anything from the Play Store, you're getting quite a bit here at the $200 price point. Everything else, fairly basic, beyond what I've pointed out. That's why I'm not going to go over it. Samsung's own uh, music and, uh, music hub to sell you know music content beyond the game hub that I showed you before. They're trying to sell you all the media that Sony does, as well as Amazon uh, and every other manufacturer, even Toshiba, who's as close to vanilla Android as it, as it gets, but they still keep it closed off, much like this tablet. And the whole point is that if you want a higher res screen, if you want better specifications, Samsung is clearly telling you you have to spend more money. Um, in my opinion, don't move... Uh, laterally, I mean, to another 
uh, Galaxy Tab 3 product. You're better off going, as I mentioned before, with the Note 8. You get better specifications, the S Pen, higher resolution display, and the price is only a little more than $100. And foreseeably down the road, that gap, that is, it's just going to narrow. That $100 plus gap is going to get smaller, not wider. So uh, more of an argument for the Note 8, in my opinion, if you must have the Samsung experience with TouchWiz and the build quality. And the physical buttons, again, I really do like because they don't eat into real estate on your screen. And when you're down on a mobile, you know, down to a small 7-inch scr uh, screen size on a mobile device like this, you really don't want those buttons eating into your experience. So that's definitely a good thing. The S Planner calendar is solid all around. Definitely the best in the business, in my opinion, if you're looking for um, a built-in calendar from the overlays that manufacturers respectively deliver. And that's, again, speaking to the fact that Samsung really does make some of the best Android devices on the market. This one in particular, though, not a personal favorite simply because its price point doesn't refl uh, reflect the performance that I think many of us are accustomed to getting from Samsung, and that's in part because they really have, as I mentioned before, um, picked apart every price point and created a tablet here at 200 uh, $300 for the 8-inch, and 400 for the 10-inch. And they all have different hardware, but none of them are explosive. None of them are groundbreaking. You really have to move up to the Note brand in order to get uh, the latest and greatest. And even there, we're waiting on a refresh right now. Uh, so that's important to note. But battery life here is good. You're looking at a solid 6 to 8 hours, depending on what you're doing. You may even be able to crank out more. Through the course of this video, we have been on the highest screen brightness, for those of you who have been watching the battery through the full uh, almost 17 minutes now. Keep that in mind. Um, and, you know, that battery will be eaten depending on how much you have synced and how much you're really utilizing Wi Fi, screen brightness, Bluetooth, GPS, all the things you would traditionally do with this tablet. Uh, so, overall, I do like the tablet. I just feel that its price needs to go down. Overall, construction is solid. The micro SD card slot is uh, right there. I'm trying to bring it into focus for you. Uh, and, you know, it's good to have a micro SD card slot. There's no question about it. I think that uh, when you compare this to something like the Nexus, that's one of the biggest things this has in its favor. Uh, the infrared uh, remote control, I love, but quite frankly, I would never tell someone to buy this over the Nexus 7 for the infrared remote or the expandable storage because you can use an on-the-go cable with either the original Nexus uh, or the current Nexus 7. Uh, but button design is solid. Overall hardware, even though this is plastic, very well made. Uh, it's slim, and what can I say? You know, it, it borrows from the Galaxy S4 and the Note form factor, and those are all good things. The only things that it does not borrow from uh, really are what's inside, the screen and the internals, and that's a big problem, in my opinion. Uh, for some users out there, it will, it will be passable, especially when this becomes a $100 Black Friday tablet. You know, how else would you be able to get a Samsung device for 100 bucks? That day will come. Uh, but until then, I think this is a tough sell against the current uh, Nexus generation, even the previous. Uh, as you can see, 4.1.2, that's not out of the box, that's after updating, so that's another thing I wanted to point out. Uh, in terms of other things that are noteworthy, you know, Samsung has some built-in little cues, uh, but, you know, whether it's different keyboards, nothing's going to really blow you away that I'm going to show you right now. Floating keyboards... Uh, these things are the value added, uh, really the value added content you're going to get with a tablet like this, as opposed to with the Nexus 7 where you're going to get hardware that is almost being sold to you at a break even cost because you're getting such a high end piece of hardware, but you're not getting a floating keyboard. I mean, no better way to put it than, than that right there. So if you must have that Galaxy experience, in a 7-inch form factor, this is right now your only way to do it. I still recommend going with the Note 8 for a little bit more money. You'll get a lot better hardware. Still not the latest and greatest, but certainly not below the curve, which I feel this tablet is. Still a value-oriented package between the software, uh, at least a year of software support from Samsung, I would imagine, down the road uh, with updates, infrared port, micro SD card slot for storage expansion, 8 gigs of internal storage is really weak, but again, this is the base price point, and you're getting Polaris Office. I mean, it's enough to justify, I think, for some people, the price point. But for me personally, I can't recommend this uh, at 200 As I mentioned, as it gets softer, softer, excuse me, it will be a more attractive tablet uh, because it doesn't have a strong suit in the gaming arena either. 
Uh, so that's another thing worth mentioning. But overall, a decent performer, nothing groundbreaking, but what else would you expect from Samsung at a starting retail price of $199.99? If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.